prepping to relocate. What do you need to know? Let's discuss it. Okay, so you did all your homework. You went on the websites and you read everything they had to say on the websites and you made a decision to uproot your life and make a move. What are you going to do with all your stuff? Should you take it? Should you leave it? Should you sell it? What are you going to do? This is what you need. You need a temporary living plan. Why temporary? The stats are somewhat like this. Half of the people that come here leave in the first year. Now why is that? Did they all have some emergency they had to rush back home for? Uh, no, that's not it. It's because they got here and they decided it wasn't for them. I went on Facebook and I read all the comments and I... Everybody's different. And you can see that on Facebook. You have people that say, oh my God, this is heaven on earth, this is paradise. Yeah, except we know that it's not, because there is no place that's heaven on earth. If you want heaven, you go to heaven. If you want earth, you go to earth. And when you're in earth, you have things like weather and disasters and heartache and joy and happiness and beautiful and ugly and construction. and That's earth. Welcome to being mortal. And Ecuador is not immune to all the problems. It has a lot of pluses. Now keep in mind, one of the things that you will read constantly are from people that are retired. And all of a sudden they have time to stop and smell the roses. And they can walk the paths along the river. And they can sightsee and they can... Because you're retired! If you had stayed where you came from, you could have done those same things. So it's not Ecuador that caused that. It's because you now have time to do those things. And you come to a country that's foreign to you, that's different. There's many things to learn. There's many things to discover. There's things you've never seen before. And so your life is full of those adventures. And it's fun and it's wonderful. But it's kind of like meeting your first girlfriend or boyfriend. Everything's great. Everything's perfect. They can do no wrong. You get into a year in the relationship and that laugh, eh, maybe it's not so cute anymore. Maybe it's grating on you a little bit. You get seven years if you made it that far and you're ready to kill each other. Because all the things that you just thought were just adorable or you just ignored, all of a sudden you can't ignore them. They're right in your face and they just piss you off. Well, coming to a country like Ecuador or any country that's different is the same thing. And so you can't come here for two weeks and say, ah, that's it. That's it. You don't know. So, issue number one. Should I buy or should I rent? Well, based on what I just said, what do you think? Of course you don't want to buy. It's, I'm not supposed to say it's stupid. Insane? Crazy? How about this? It's, it's poor judgment. Because you have no idea how you're going to feel in a year or two. And whatever it is you buy, until you've lived there for a while, you don't even know how that particular area is. I'm living in my third area. And there's always things that come up that you didn't know, didn't expect, didn't think about. For example, this is a very quiet neighborhood. But in the background, when I do these videos, which is during a day, usually early afternoon, across the street there's a ceramic company. And so you'll hear band saws going off and different you know kinds of power tools I never thought about that I knew they, they existed now they stop working at five o'clock and so it's it's not really a bother but sometimes when I make a video 
they'll start up doing something and shh, okay I've got to have to wait well maybe I can't wait I got to go somewhere all right I'm getting off track the point is you don't know until you've been here for a while so why would you invest a hundred hundred and fifty seventy thousand why would you put that kind of money into a market when you really don't know you see when you're back home from wherever you came from you know the area in general well enough to know when you go to a neighborhood you pretty much know what that's going to be like it's not like that here so you don't or any country that you go to that you're new issue number one number two buying property doesn't mean it's an investment as a matter of fact people that bought property here six years ago are kind of regretting it now if they're trying to sell because they can't sell even when they drop their price tens of thousands of dollars it's a tough market so if you have the money to buy something invest it somewhere where it will actually give you a return on your money and rent issue number three rent is a stint of the cost of what a mortgage or the value of that mortgage because you have all cash so you won the lottery you put it in it still has a particular value that you can uh, you could calculate out for the month and renting is going to be a quarter or a third of what the value of that money is if you bought it now, I had somebody ask a question this house that I'm renting for $400 in this neighborhood it's three floors it's four bedroom it's four bath what would it cost if it was new I don't know if it was new and he was trying to sell it or what would it cost if it were for sale I have no idea because property isn't selling uh, 120 120,000 maybe US dollars I don't know but if it's not selling does it matter 70,000 they're not selling so all these things come into play and none of them say that you should be buying how about this don't buy property until you've been here at least a year money's not burning a hole in your pocket invest it somewhere should I come in suitcases or should I ship a container well let's go back to the beginning of the conversation half of the people that come here turn around and leave in the first year so do you really want to ship a ten thousand dollar container so you're going to bring all your household goods here and you're going to spend ten thousand dollars to do it and in a year you're going to do what spend another ten thousand to ship them all back look if you're coming here and you're going to make the plunge sell all that stuff save the ten thousand dollars add it to what you've got selling it and you come here and then you can reproduce it yes it's going to be a lot more money but that ten thousand dollars will cover a lot of that a lot more money and learn to shop when you're here don't just um, you know run off to the gringo stores you can you can buy things half the price that you would once you have knowledge so my suggestion is you bring suitcases and you have a boatload of money that you would have used the container for now if you have some particular things that you just can't part with well maybe maybe but I'm going to tell you right now that when you come to Ecuador there are many things that you need to learn to do without I don't want to do without I shouldn't have to do without yeah that may be but guess what when you're here there are things that you will have to do without and it has nothing to do with what should be or shouldn't be it's simply a fact so prepare yourself for that should I drive or not drive okay keep in mind all of these things have been covered in previous videos Personally, I think driving is silly it's expensive it's risky and there's no real reason you can hire taxis you can hire a driver you can take buses you can take busetas there really is no reason to own a car with one exception if you're coming here 
and you're of working age, then you may need a car. It, or it'll be more convenient to have a car. But if you're coming here and you're retired, it's just a waste of money. Which brings me to another thing about coming here and working here. Unless you're part of a company that is sending you here and you already have a job and it's related to that company, don't plan on getting a job here. Unemployment is extremely high. Getting a job is near impossible if you live here. Now, yes, I know, I just did a video that talked about the majority is middle class and you've got these very wealthy people. And that's true, they have the jobs. That doesn't leave anything for you. And you have many strikes against you. Uh, for example, when people go for a job here, if, if you're local here, but you're not related to that person or a friend of that person or a friend of a friend, you're not going to get that job anyway because that's how they operate. It takes knowing somebody to get that job. So don't think you're going to come here and you're going to seek fame and fortune. It's, it's, it, it, is it possible? Yeah, anything is possible, of course. Anything is possible. Is it likely? Hell no. Hell no. You're going to come here and you're going to I hope you just have a big bank account to live off of until you realize the error of your ways and you turn tail and run back home. So that's not going to be a practical thing for you. Well, I can teach English. Yeah. Occasionally they'll need an English teacher. Occasionally they'll need a math teacher. But, you know, there's no big need for them. Columbia, on the other hand, is hiring English teachers like crazy. Another thing to consider, are you single? Are you coming as a family? Are you coming as just a man and wife? That can make a difference. If you're single and you're adventurous, then you're equipped for these changes much better than if you're with somebody. Because, I mean, let's say you come with your partner, your life partner, whatever is correct, and they start nagging about, oh, I didn't say so, 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 so. You know, and it's kind of negative, and it's bringing you down, and you start getting at each other, and it's like, it's not my fault, we made a decision together. Well, I only did it for you, and you know, uh, you know, that's life, right? That happens. So that's something to take into consideration. Is it a family? You're gonna come here with kids. If they're gonna come here with kids, what school are they gonna to go to? There are some good in Cuenca. I remember these videos are about Cuenca. Uh, there are good schools, they're bilingual, um, but education is expensive here. You pay. You pay for all kinds of things. So you need to know that and not assume that anything is like the United States because almost nothing is like the United States except maybe Papa John's Pizza. Um, everything's different. And when you get here, they're not going to conform to you. They're not going to conform to what you want. You have to conform to them. And if you're not prepared to do that, it's a big mistake to come here. Now, just recently, there was somebody who's been here for six months. They absolutely hate it. They're miserable. They think it was the worst mistake they ever made. They're going to Mexico. And guess what? This person is going to have a hell of a time in Mexico because they're just bitter, nasty, and... They go in places and they demand things and they get upset and it shouldn't be that way. And, you know, if you're going to have that attitude, you're going to be horribly miserable because they don't care what you think it should be. It is what it is. And that's the way it's going to go. And if you're going to be loud and rude about it, you're just going to make things worse because people will hate you for that because they don't like rude behavior pretty much like anywhere in this world are you healthy or are you ill if you're ill don't come here if you're healthy that's fine don't come here ill now you can say ah but you came here I came here and I was recovering I was done being ill I just had a long recovery that's quite a bit different if I had issues that I had to contend with, that I had to go see doctors for, that I might have to go to the hospital for, that I have to find certain medicines and figure out what they have and where I can get it, and God, I can't believe it's costing that much money. 
you're not prepared for this, so don't come. Stay where you are. Something else to keep in mind. Are you able to spend a lot of time alone? Now this is even if you come with a partner. You're going to be spending a lot of time isolated. Eventually you can break through that and you can get a social circle going and but you're going to be pretty isolated and you don't have a lot of choices like you're used to. You're used to hundreds of people in your life that you can pick and choose from those personalities kind of feel comfortable and have similar interests and you enjoy being around them. It's a different story when you go to another country. You're going to have a ton of people around you that really could care less about you because you're an outsider and even if they're interested, the communication gap is an issue. So, you know, that's problem number one. Well, I'll just stay with the gringo community. Yeah, you can do that. Half of the people that come here are pretty much lunatics and they're running away because their life was miserable there because nobody could stand them. The other half are very nice, pleasant people. But instead of having hundreds of people that you can choose from, that you can relate to and get along with and you like their personality and you have similar, these are people that are also foreign to you. And it will be nowhere near as easy to find and establish those kinds of friendships and relationships. And while you're doing it, you're going to have these periods of aloneness, of, of loneliness. Now, can you go to event? Yeah, there's all kinds of events and things going on. But also keep in mind that a lot of people that have been going to these events already have their little click form and doesn't mean it's not high school and they're not going to let you in but you're going to have to be kind of aggressive to make something happen. All I'm saying is if you're not comfortable with periods of time of aloneness, of being alone, if that loneliness eats at you and goes against your grain, you're going to be sad and lonely and miserable for periods of time. So think about that when you're making a move. Do you have adequate funds to come here and to live and to live comfortably? You're going to need tens of thousands of dollars to come here and get yourself established the way you want. You're going to need an income. I'm not talking about the minimum requirement of $800 a month you're not going to live very well on $800 a month if you want to live just a decent normal life as one person. $1,200 maybe? I couldn't do that. But maybe you can. For me, I think bottom is about $1,500. $2,000 dollars and I'm okay. If you don't have that, and a month comes along where something happens and do you have anything to fall back on? Or are you relying on retirement funds that only hit your door once a month? What happens if you run out of money at three weeks? Do you have a fallback? You're in another country, so you don't have a welfare shop down the road. You don't have a church to go to to get a food basket. You don't, you don't have a safety net. So you need to carry your own safety net. So be prepared for that. Or don't come. Are you willing and able to sacrifice? Because you will make sacrifices. A lot of people have this idea, they're going to come here and they want to live a simple life and it's going to make for a happier life for them. And they're going to want to get back to nature and they're going to want to live with the locals and we're only going to want to eat fresh and organic and, and none of these things really make sense once you get somewhere because you are who you are and doing some kind of instant makeover and becoming somebody else and stepping into Walden Pond it just it's not practical it's not realistic now can you get there and be like that yeah of course you can but you're not just going to step through the looking glass and it's going to magically be that. You're going to have to go through some personal adjustments. 
if that's what you truly desire. And remember that once you get to that place of this utopia that you have in your head, this fantasy world, it's very likely, it's more likely than not, it won't be what you wanted. It won't be what you expected. You grew up and lived your life with certain things around you that create a comfort zone. And when those things are gone, there's a void. It's a real question on whether you can fill that void. So here's my bottom line on this topic. If you have any notion of changing the way you live, you're making a mistake. Change the way you live before you get here. Don't go through all the legal paperwork and all the money and expenditure just to find out that you don't really want to be that person that you fantasized about. All these things are something that you need to consider before you plan on making this move. I'm not saying don't make the move. Look, I made the move. I made the plunge. I live here and I'm happy. But keep in mind, I've been to dozens of other countries. I've lived in three countries other than the United States. I lived in Colombia. So a lot of these issues I was already familiar with. So taking the plunge, it was an educated plunge. There were surprises, some good, some bad. So you need to make this a more serious consideration than most people seem to make. Most people seem to just get this fantasy and I'm going to do it and they just kind of up and do it and they plow ahead. You need to give this some serious thought because when half of the people that move here in a year turn around, pack up and move back, many of these people couldn't afford to do that and now they put themselves in a financial bind. That was the impetus for actually starting doing these videos, seeing people in that situation. I don't want to see you go through that. So you need to get real information and that's a problem. That's a real problem because there's so much bogus crap out there. And even when it's real, mine are real. I'm being perfectly honest with you. I don't want you to make a bad mistake. I have no vested interest in getting you here. I mean, if you come here, that's great. You know, we get together, have a cup of coffee, have a good old time. But <laughs> I don't want to see more mistakes, you know, costing people their, their life's fortune and put, putting them in a bad place. There's, there's no good for that. But even watching my videos, as straight as I am, it's my perspective. It's my experience. It's my point of view. Granted, I try to educate myself. I talk to a lot of people. I understand a lot of what's going on here. Uh, almost all my friends are local people to Ecuador. So, I, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. But it's still from my point of view. And that could very well be different than your point of view. So even if you take everything I say to heart, you're still not me. And so if you come here, you may find something. I'm going to do several of these videos about preparing to come here, but I wanted to give this recap, this overall synopsis of things that I've talked about over the course of all these videos and try to boil it down, put it in one place. And hopefully that's going to help some people to get their mind thinking about this. If you've got questions to ask, feel free. I'll even do a Skype call once in a while. I don't want to see you make a mistake. And if you know somebody else, you know, make some contact, get the real information, get your questions answered, you know, get that done before you make the move. There are some people, you know, it's like, should I visit or should I make the plunge? Both can be a disaster because if you visit, Remember that girlfriend I talked about that, you know, everything's perfect for a year? Are you going to come and visit for a year or are you coming for two or three weeks? You're coming for two or three weeks, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be just amazing. Until you've been here for a year. 
and then it grates on you and then it gets to you and then you want to break up so I'll see you in the next video you know you're cool